it is my favorite time of the year. It is lambing season. It has taken us 150 days to get to this point. Fabio here has done his job 150 days ago, and we now have baby lambs starting to hit the ground, which is fantastic. But growing lambs and growing all this and handling sheep might not be for everyone. This is one of my favorite items to grow here on the farm. They're great. Not all of them have names, but we have some that are part of our original homestead. Shout out to Nadine. And they're, they're, they have their own personality, their own fun. The baby sheep are an absolute hoot to have around. They're jumping and moving around, having a blast. This is our future meat. This is basically a sustainable way that each year we can grow our own meat and have the best high quality meat. Now, before I get started on things that you should know, I wanna talk about my struggles this year because this year has been very different than my last five years homesteading. This past summer, we had a, an absolute anomaly happen here in Mississippi. Mississippi is normally only compared to the Amazon jungle. Like it gets hot every day at three o'clock, we get a nice quick downpour of rain and then it goes back to, to being super hot and muggy. But that, you know, that 30 minute to hour long rain normally supplies us with enough water to keep us hay growing year round. This year we did not have that unfortunately. We went almost a full 18 weeks without a single drop of rain touching our farm. That means that we don't have the hay that we need in the fields growing naturally to be able to feed them consistently. And it's been a big struggle this year. This is not something that I've ever had happen to me. So uh, we're kind of fighting it. And uh, I'll admit that my herd looks a little thin and I'm a little embarrassed by it, but I wanna be honest about the struggles that go on on the homestead. I'm not gonna hide something. I'm not gonna just show you what I do really well. This is an ongoing thing that I'm fighting here in Mississippi because I don't have grass. So we're having to supplement with a lot of feed and a lot of hay. Hay is almost between 15 to $20 a bale for the cheap stuff. And so we're really struggling to be able to do that. Yes, I could maybe find large bales for cheaper, but I don't have the means to transport that hay. I am a small time homesteader. Yes, I have 12 acres, but I do not have a tractor to be able to move that hay around. And I don't know if you've ever had to push a hay bale, but it is deceptively heavy. You don't think that that thing is that heavy because, oh, it's just hay. That bale of hay is hundreds of pounds and it's very difficult to move. So we have been on the struggle bus this fall and winter as we recover from that. Now we've had some great rain here in the last couple of weeks that are helping us offset this. And we're starting to see a nice little, maybe you can see the patch of greenery behind me. So we are on the up and up and that's the good news. But until this grass kind of is able to catch up in the warmth where this grass can get high, it's very difficult for us to supply in. So we're having to pay in a lot of money this year to keep our herd in. So there's a couple options that we have to, to be able to settle that. We could butcher down the whole herd right now and we could put probably, I think probably two to 300 pounds of meat into the freezer. And as a chef, that's fine, that's great. I love lamb chops, but I don't want, I don't like doing it that way. Cause then I gotta restart, I gotta buy new sheep. I gotta get them up to size and they gotta get to sexual maturity weight or I gotta buy a pregnant you, and that comes at a premium. And for me, I'm just gonna have to wait it out and I'm just gonna have to keep chunking it out. I'm playing a balancing game right now where I'm doing what I can to give them their feed and what they need, but at the same time, just giving them what they need and not oversupplying them. A lot of times, I'll be honest with you, we overfeed. We just put feed out and we kind of let them do their thing. So that kind of lifestyle that they're kind of used to, they're not getting right now. We're having to, to portion it out and uh, they're probably getting six cups of dry feed per day per lamb. And you know, that's, that's pretty darn good. I think that's still starting to fatten them up. They were getting less. So I think that's starting to beef them up a little bit. And now we found some, uh, we actually found some local hay, which was, very difficult. Originally, it was all stuff from like Oklahoma being shipped down. And again, $20 a bale. 
but we finally found somebody who's got some local hay selling to us for about $12. But that's until supplies in. He's got a giant barn full of hay and once he's done with that hay, he's out. He's done, he's finito. So this is a good year for him growing hay, not so much a great year for those of us who are buying. My second option is to sell. And it was very hard not to sell um, because I, some of them I we've had since bottle babies. So I'll admit that I'm attached to it, not in a, it's gonna live forever on my homestead, but in a, I've already put in so much work to get it there. I don't want to sell them off at this point. I've done the work, I've got them there. Now it's just about beefing them up. Why I haven't done the butcher route especially is I wasn't sure 100% where each individual you was at in the process of gestation. So I'm, I, I would absolutely be heartbroken if I went to go butcher a lamb and, or butcher a you and then find out that it had a fetus growing inside of it. I would have absolutely been upset with myself. So we've, we've got, I'm just gonna let them figure it out for now. We can sell them in pairs, which is a, a common thing to do. You can also, like a, a, a you and its baby, you can also sell a you that you f know for sure is pregnant. No, you can sell those in our area easily, $250 plus. And so we have some options. I'm just so sold on the fact that I've already done all of this work. So to let that slip out of my grasp now would be absolutely dreadful at this point, right? Am I wrong for that? I don't think so, but we're on a recovery. And I think we can just kind of keep the trend going. They got super thin. We had a very cold streak a couple weeks ago. It was iced over and snow, which is not something that they've really, most of these had never seen snow before. So this was a new concept for everything to be snowy and icy. So they spent a lot of time in here and not going out. So they got a little thin on me. Again, we, we picked up on it super quick and started getting a little bit more of that dry feed in and supplementing in to counterbalance the, the feed that they're not getting off of the pasture. I'm excited that you're here. We got cooking videos coming up. We've got just such an awesome time and I'm really hoping that you're enjoying it. We're kind of walking around and exploring the barn and it's just a great time to be in the homestead community. The, the community has grown so much in the last, really the last five years since the pandemic. And I think there's so many people who can give, I think there's so many people here who can provide a wealth of knowledge. So I am one out of a billion out here on the YouTube space and I'm glad that you joined me for this video. Please make sure you hit the like, hit the subscribe down below. And of course, there's two amazing videos right up here that are going to help you find the next thing here on the homestead. We look forward to seeing you next time on Homesteading Chef. Davy Jones. Come on. Get. 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 Come on. You want to go in here? You want to go in here with Ami? You want to go in here with Ami? You want to go in there with Ami? Or Ami's going to come out here and cause problems too.